There are several notable comic books out there that have come under scrutiny over the past uh, you know, decade, two decades. One of them is Mouse. I think they've been it's been kind of getting banned off and on by different school districts for the last 25 years. Obviously, today or within the last 24 hours, there was a school district in Tennessee that voted unanimously to ban Mouse, which is basically a depiction of Art Spiegelman's father's experience during the Holocaust. This is the news that we have. The McMinn County School Board in Tennessee voted to ban cartoonist Art Spiegelman's Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novel Mouse from its curriculum. Me personally, and I have a couple of stories that I want to you know, share with you as to why I feel this way. I am against basically banning books of any kind, especially once you start getting into like the high school level. <laughs> Firstly, especially works that are this important and dealing with historical events of this magnitude that we definitely shouldn't be forgetting and we, we all need to be learning from. Me personally, I remember... I'll, I'll, I got a couple of stories. The, the first one that, that comes to mind, I was either 14 or 15. I, I would have been in the ninth grade, my first year of high school. And at that point, I was a very, very good student. But I was <laughs> I was really good at remembering things, but I wasn't very good at understanding what I was supposed to learn from them. If you wanted facts, I would regurgitate your facts. To that point, I didn't understand why I was learning history. Does that make sense? Maybe... Some of y'all went through the, through the same experience to where like, I don't know what I'm doing with this history thing here. I remember I was in a history class. The teacher's name, it was Mr. Richley. And I believe, this is the way he said it, his family had immigrated or escaped Germany during World War II. They would have been called the Reichleys at the time. They changed their name when they came to America. And he, had, he and his family had escaped in the early days of World War II. And he was our history teacher. And we had one of the students that I'd been going to school with my entire life. I'm from a very, very small farming town. So we would have known each other since basically we were five years old. Was complaining as we were learning about World War II and the Holocaust. The, the student, I don't want to give her a name away, uh, said, you know, this is stupid. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Which, you know, I wouldn't say. I just learned the facts and regurgitated them as I was supposed to. But this student spoke up. And I remember the look in, in my teacher's eyes and Mr. Richley's eyes. You could see he was emotionally moved. He became a history teacher for a reason. And he said, I'd never seen him freak out before. <laughs> I'd never really even seen the man raise his voice. He wasn't the best teacher I ever had in my life. He seemed like an average teacher. But at this moment, he was a fantastic teacher because he drove something home in me and made my understanding of why I was in this classroom crystal clear. And he said, so someone like this you know, will never, ever come into power again. So things like this will never, ever happen again. Speaking of Hitler and the Holocaust. And it drove home to me. I wasn't supposed to just be learning facts. I was supposed to be learning the mistakes and follies of, of history. Why did these things happen? How did they be? How did people let these things come into to be? And why why was this allowed to happen to an, an entire group of people? So people like you and I can put a stop to this before it ever gets to the to this level again. And at that moment is one of the few moments in high school that really changed me. And uh, I, I definitely have to give that to Mr. Richley. He drove it home. He wasn't trying to drove it, drive it home to me. He was driving home to another student, but it changed the way I felt about things and the way I learned history and I see it and the way I incorporate it into my life. History, whether it's good or bad, should move you and it should change your opinion. Not all your opinions, but it should change you in some way and your outlook on the world in, my, in the way I see. In the way when I, when I read up on history and I learn facts and I start reading into why things have happened. There's another... Part of this is another story that that I'll um, you know give to you guys. I think I've said this on the channel before. Most of you probably haven't heard this story. I obviously, uh, like I said, I'm from a very small farming town. I went to the same church essentially my entire life until I was 18 and I joined the United States Air Force. We had a youth program. We would meet up on Wednesdays. And one of my friends from down the street was interested in potentially going to church and learning about you know, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he said, you know what, Wes? You go to church on Wednesdays, right? Can I come with you one of these days? I said, absolutely, Dave. 
and his name was Dado, and I said, yeah, why don't you come with us next Wednesday? I did not know this was going to happen, but this was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. So we get into the youth service, <laughs> and normally there's a little rock band playing, and you know you get your your lesson for the day, and you know play some games or whatever. And they they say we're doing a bonfire, so we go outside. It turns out this bonfire is actually a, a music burning session. People are like bringing in cases of CDs, and they were burning Metallica, <laughs> Guns and Roses, all the bands that I liked at the time. And I was so embarrassed. For that moment, you know, that I brought this friend with me who was interested in the teachings of Jesus Christ. And he all he learned about was that book burning was, was a part of this thing or music burning. And apparently the things that he and I were interested in, you know, were, were complete evil and, and, and whatnot. Obviously, Daniel never went to church again. And I imagine he never met uh, or, or took Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I don't blame him for the way that that happened. And I'm not, I'm not. I'm just not for censorship, and I'm not, I'm not for burning books and whatnot. So, and I'm obviously not for uh, censoring or denying people the access to history and historical accounts of things that have happened, especially things as significant as the Holocaust. So, here's some more information uh, about the story. Originally serialized in Raw from 1980 to 1991, Spiegelman's Mouse depicts the cartoonist who was born in 1948, shortly after the end of World War II, interviewing his father, a Polish Jew, about his experience as a Holocaust survivor. The acclaimed postmodernist graphic novel famously depicts Jews as mice and Germans as cats. This is an important documentation of a horrific event that happened in this world. And this is offering an alternative way to learn this history. It's a, another way to for young people or, or older people, I've, I've read Mouse as an adult, to go in here and sing an account of something that you and I, a vast majority, of, that maybe there's one or two viewers out there that could relate to this event and even you know understand how it could happen, for us to go in there and see a firsthand accounting of what transpired, why it was so terrible, and why we can never let it happen again. This is an important piece of art. This is an important historical record that should be, in my mind, available to students, especially, you know, of the high school age. To deny them access to these historical accounts and records, you know, is bad. It's just as bad as denying someone an, a, a copy of the Diary of Anne Frank. It's just as bad as denying someone the ability to watch Schindler's List is just as bad as denying someone the ability to watch a movie like Hotel Rwanda, another accounting of something that a vast majority of the people in this world could never believe would be possible. Yet it happened. How did we get here? What was the toll on people? It's important for you and I and everybody to understand these things. So if it's happening where we are, whether it's in the United States, where I'm from, or here in the Philippines, where I reside, or in Europe, where a lot of the viewers are, or in Asia, or, or wherever, we can understand and spot it before it's happening. These accounts and these stories are important. The report continues on. It says, as reported by the Tennessee Holler and the Guardian, the McMinn County School Board voted 10-0 to ban mouse from all its schools, citing the book's inclusions of words like goddamn and naked pictures of women. Apparently, the school board discussed the possibility of simply redacting words and images it found inappropriate, though ultimately opted to ban the book outright. When reached for comment by the Tennessee Holler, the board claimed that the book being about the Holocaust had nothing to do with why it's banned. Okay, I will take them at their word that it has nothing to do with the Holocaust and it is about some bad words and some uh, depictions of naked women. You cannot make the Holocaust a nice event. And there is no justification, unless you're dealing with very young people, and I don't think that maybe somebody the age of like six, like my son's age, should really even be learning about something like this. I think it would be overwhelming and they would never be able to comprehend the scale in which it happened or how it happened. But once you're of an age where these events are important to learn, you can't make the Holocaust nice. You have to present it for what it was, an atrocity, on a scale that is completely unimaginable. And the human cost of that event was so high that we could never afford to let it happen again. 
you can't put a pretty face on it. You can't censor it. And you should not be not allowing people to to discover the events that happen in here and discover this piece of history to be moved by it, be, be changed by it, and to be aware of how it happened. There's no justification. You can't censor it and you should certainly should not be uh, banning it. We will never learn from history if we don't know it. We could never prevent things like this happening if we aren't aware of why it happened, how it happened, who it impacted. And these first hounds accounts, first hand accounts are vital to this. The Diary of Anne Frank is a very interesting point of view and perspective on the events of the Holocaust from a very young woman who obviously was in hiding with her family, was being protected, and we know that her fate was not good. Obviously, she, she died at Auschwitz. Auschwitz. That is an important accounting of what happened. Mouse, an interview between Art Spiegelman and his father and what his experience was during the Holocaust is an important, necessary accounting that people should have access to and they need access to. We, we are seeing a lot of things happen in this world where you could see these things, maybe not to the scale or whatever, occurring once again where people are once again kind of uh, turning their neighbors in. You know, uh, you know, without thinking the, the ultimate cost, right? Because they're not learning from history. This is a quote from one of the board members from McMinn, uh, this McMinn School Board. Why does the educational system promote this kind of stuff if it's not wise or healthy? I am not denying it was horrible, brutal and cruel. It's like when you're watching TV and a cuss word or nude scene comes on, it would be the same movie without it. Well, this would be the same book without it. If I had a child in the eighth grade, this ain't happening. If I had to move him out and homeschool him or put him somewhere else, this is not happening. To equate a firsthand accounting of the Holocaust with a nude scene in Basic Instinct is, <laughs> they're, they're not the same. It's a bad analogy. It's, it's not a one for one scenario on what you're trying to describe or protect your children from. And I think it is perfectly fine if someone thinks that their children are not ready to read Mouse in the eighth grade because of the words goddamn or the depiction of naked women in it. That, as, your, as a parent, is your right to do it. But to deny other students the access to the story and the ability to learn and to be changed by history is folly and it's cruel and it shouldn't be going on. Just because your child isn't ready for this story, just because you don't believe your child will learn from it, doesn't mean you should be denying everybody. It's playing to the lowest common denominator, and that is always a bad philosophy. It, it is bad policy to be doing that. Every community needs to know about these things and learn from them. And I just think because certain parents or a group of parents aren't comfortable with it, and maybe they have the school board, to deny everybody outright is it's gross it's disgusting it shouldn't be going on and i think we've seen enough with the power that school boards have right now that these people and their power should be put in check a little bit and there needs to be an accounting and and hurt and and this the parents themselves need to be heard just because the school board overwhelmingly agrees with it does not mean that the parents do does not mean that the students best interests are being served by this body and i 100 percent agree with this as far as art spiegelman himself he addressed the mcmahon school uh county school board's decision to remove mouse from its curriculum in an interview with cnbc he had to say i'm kind of baffled by this it's leaving me with my jaw open like what and he called the school board's decision as orwellian it absolutely is they're trying to rewrite history they're trying to censor history they think they're doing it in the best interest of, of the children, in the best interest of the, of the students. But that's not what's going on. It's because they're uncomfortable or they're not ready to have these conversations with their children. That's between them and their children. They shouldn't be making these, these decisions and broad brushing away a work, a piece of art, uh, an accounting, a historical accounting as important as mouse. And that's how I feel about it. This is in the news. Obviously, it's comics rated, so I do what it did want to hit, hit on it here on the channel. I definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this? Are you for you know the banning of certain books? Me personally, I want better comic books, but I'm not for banning or censoring what people have done. I wasn't even for 
for censoring Batman's dong and in, in that uh, that Lee Vermeo Brian Azzarello book, Batman Dam. The art's out there. You know, people have seen it. There's the, you, at that point, you know, why be embarrassed of it? And that isn't important like the historical account, accounting in, in Mouse. It's a completely different animal. And I just, I think to ban these books, to try and censor, censor them, is complete folly. We do need to protect children from certain works, but 